Hallelujah. Mm. Praise the Lord. Well, good evening, good morning, good night, good afternoon, wherever you're dialing, uh, um, watching this live stream from. So glad you're able to join us today. This is Dr. Patrick Oben. Welcome to Glory and Grace Live Bible Study. Today's topic is um, it's quite, you know, always something quite interesting the Lord puts in my heart to share with you. But today's topic is extremely practical. It's very important, very, very, very important. You know, each time I stress, every topic is important. Uh, this, is, this is really important. This is really important. And there are several reasons for that. First, as I mentioned um, just recently, the terms spirit, soul, they are extremely confusing. Extremely confusing. You know, reading what scholars have written, reading, you know, what our fathers have written, and a lot is going on. What is the soul? I remember I had a, I had a, an editor working on uh, devotionals. She had a hard time understanding what the soul is. In other words, every time I write a devotional that has to do with the soul and spirit, it was so confusing to her, very confusing to her. She would interpret it or edit the devotionals and change the sense of the devotional. I would be like, oh my God, please don't change it. The soul and the spirit, very confusing. On the other side of it all is this is extremely important for you to understand spiritual things as it pertain or as they pertain to us. You our nature, who we are, how we respond to God is extremely important to function in spiritual things. God is spirit, and we really have to know how to engage with Him a spirit. Part of that understanding has to come from us really understanding who we are. What is man? What is this thing called the soul? By God's grace, if I can, this is going to be really hard to get through everything, but maybe this is going to be just part one. So I really want you to pay attention. really want you to pay attention. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. Listen to what the scripture says. It says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. The first time that word soul appeared in scripture, man became a living soul. So what is the soul? What is the soul? Let me begin, let me lay a few foundations. First, in, in, in the world of theology, there is a debate on the nature of man. Those of you who are ministers, you probably know what I'm talking about. If you're not a minister, you can certainly read about it. It was very important. Of the different types, the different theories, you know, there are two that really stand out. There, has, there is a group that says man is in two parts. They call them dichotomist, di, two parts. Meaning that man has something internal, which is called the soul or spirit, and then the body, that that's what man is. There is another group, more popular, but not everybody accepts it, is that man is in three parts, body, soul, and spirit. So you call them trichotomist. So you have dichotomist and trichotomist. Dichotomist say man is in two parts, something inside called the spirit or soul, and there's something outside called the body. The trichotomists say man is in three parts, 
body, soul, and spirit. I've read what they have written. And you look at it in scripture, you know, it's quite amazing. The, the truth is this. There is, a, there, is a, there, is, there is something correct about those two. That the dichotomist who says that there is no difference between the soul and the spirit is making a terrible error. Just reading, I've read a lot about what they have written and all of that. There is a difference between the soul and the spirit. Now the trichotomist, the typical trichotomist, or the traditional, presents the trichotomist view as if man is body, soul, and spirit, three distinct existential parts of man. There is a small problem with that. So body, soul, and spirit. The scripture has told us that, you know, second, you know the, the Apostle Paul speaking in um, 1 Thessalonians 5.23, praying that the Lord would preserve his body, that he would preserve our spirit, our soul, and our body. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 tells us very well that the word of God is able to make a distinction between the soul and the spirit, implying there is a difference. It's quite amazing how, you know, this small theology, how, you know, the trichotomist view, when you read the interpretation of this scripture, quite amazing how they want to make the scripture say what it is not saying, what it is saying, or they want to make the scripture not to say what it is saying. But, well, this is not a theological discussion. So man is in three parts. Three parts, body, soul, and spirit. Today I'm not talking about the spirit. I'm not talking about the body. I'm talking about the soul. This confusing thing called the soul. What is it? If that first foundation is in place, second foundation, the word soul, S-O-U-L in scripture does not mean one thing. Remember, a, a, a few months, a weeks ago, I was talking a little bit about biblical interpretation. And this is what I said. In fact, in what I've been teaching called, you know, some of you who have been following this, um, the inductive Bible study, right? Inductive Bible study, observation, interpretation, and so on and so forth. On the observation, if you get into details, one of the things they will tell you is that words, words, the meaning of words in scripture has to do with the context. You cannot take the word soul and try to fit it in every scripture. It doesn't mean one thing. So that is the reason why we don't deal with words in biblical interpretation per se. We deal with terms. Terms, they might be the same words, but they have different meanings in different scripture. If you can understand this, it is going to be critical to understand the meaning of the word soul. So the word soul doesn't refer to one thing. So you don't take the word soul in every part, in every verse that it occurs, you try to make it mean one thing. No, it is not. And to make things even more complicated, though it's easy, the word soul in scripture, in its different meanings, can be used as a synonym for the spirit. Let me repeat what I just told you. Remember, I'm trying to break down very easily what is the soul. And I'm trying to lay some foundations before I talk about the common thing that we know. I've just told you the word soul has different meanings in scripture. So if you find that word in a scripture, it is your responsibility to know what God is referring to in that particular scripture. And related to this fact is the truth that the word soul can be used as a synonym for the spirit of man. In other words, in some scriptures, the word soul and spirit cannot be distinguished. Hallelujah. It, let me just give you a classic example. In heaven, the Bible says that, you know, beneath the altar of incense, John saw the souls of those who were, you know, beheaded for the testimony of Jesus. He, saw, he used the word soul 
What was he talking about? The spirits of those men. In the scripture, it tells us the spirits of just men made perfect. So he was talking to us about the spirits of just men made perfect. And he called those spirits soul. That's the sense I'm talking to you about. So sometimes the word soul can be used as a synonym for the spirit. So that you can say my soul or my spirit. They mean the same thing. But it's not always. You have to know which one is which. Hallelujah. In fact, to even make things very interesting, the Bible uses the word soul, especially in the Old Testament, in the scripture, to talk about the dead body. He calls the dead body soul. So, you see, different meanings. However, the meaning that is of concern to us is the one we know, that we typically say, what is the soul? The soul is the mind, our thoughts, our emotions, and our will. Our thoughts, our emotions, and our will. That's a classic way we know of the soul. So I would focus on this, this meaning of the soul. I will not use, I will not, because being used as a synonym for the spirit or even the body, synonym for the complete man, body, soul, and spirit, that is not going to be too helpful. The part that is very helpful is when the, the scripture uses the soul in the context in which it separates it from the body and the spirit. Classic example, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. He talks about the spirit, he talks about the soul, and he talks about the body. So he clearly makes a distinction between the spirit, the soul, and the body. That is that meaning of the soul in that context where it is different from the spirit and the body. That is what I want you to really catch. Because it will change your life. Oh, glory to God. I pray that the Lord gives you understanding. Gives you understanding of this. I'm laying foundations. Laying foundations as we go on. If you have cut those two foundations, I've already told you. Now let me take it one step further. And let me catch, let me catch you as I cut myself when the Lord started showing me this. When a man dies, where does the body go to? To the ground, right? Very easy. Where does the spirit go to? It goes to God. You now know the question I'm going to ask you, right? Where does the soul go to? And there you now begin to see the nuances of the soul. Where does the soul go to? The body goes to the ground. The spirit goes to God. Where does the soul go to? Hallelujah. And this is where the mystery of the soul comes in. Listen. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. This is so beautiful. Genesis 2 verse 7. Let me read it to you. Listen to what it says. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. He, man, the dust of the ground. And this is what he did. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Let me dramatize this. Listen. The Bible says God created man from the dust of the ground. What was that? The body. The body came from the dust. How does he call the body? He, called, he didn't say he created the body of man from the dust. He says he created man from the dust. Very important. Listen, he created man from the dust. And we know that it is the body that came from the dust. And then, picture this. The body of man was lying down. I want you to think about Ezekiel 37. That is the greatest prophetic picture of creation. The, Ezekiel came and the Lord said, prophesy to those bones. He spoke the word. And those bones came together and formed bodies on the ground. That is exactly what happened in creation. God spoke to the ground and the body came out. I know sometimes we, we, 
It's, it's very easy to think that God used his hands to go to the ground and mold the ground. No, he did not do that. He spoke. Just like Ezekiel spoke the word, the bodies came. But there was something missing. The bodies were lying all over. Just like Adam's body, perfect, was lying on the ground. Remember, God called that body man. He didn't say the body of man. So the, the body is not just something that is an attachment to man. He, God called it man. So when the body was lying down there, what did he do? He breathed into the nostrils of man. There was a wind, divine wind from God. I'll get to that in a second. It came into man. When he told Ezekiel, what did he tell him? Prophesy to the wind. There was a wind that came and blew into the nostrils of those corpses. And the people jumped up. They were alive. They started living. Hallelujah. So God created the body. And then he breathed the spirit. He created the spirit. So the body was created. The spirit was created. And when he, the body lying here, the spirit came from God. What happened? When the spirit entered the body, the man came alive. And that man that came alive, he called the man soul. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, let me just repeat what I just told you. God created the body. He was lying down. The breathing process, I'll get to that, was both creation and giving of the human spirit. So he created the body, he created the spirit. And when those two came together, the man came alive. He called that man a living soul. So number one, God created the spirit and the body. He did not create, per se, the soul. What is the soul? The soul is the person, is the being, the being that comes alive on the earth when the spirit is in touch with the body. Let, let, me, let me explain it to you this way. The, this body is part of the earth, is earthly, like the animals. The spirit is part of the spiritual world. For the, 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 the spirit to live on the earth, it's a different story. God had to fix that problem. Because spirits cannot live on the earth. There are two different worlds. This is where it gets very interesting. The human spirit by itself can live independently of the body. In other words, Without the body, the spirit can live independently, can see, can think, can do everything by itself. That's the mystery of it. That's the reason why a man can die. He dies. And then like Jesus, Jesus died. He went to hell. He fought with the devil. That was his spirit. He was speaking. He was acting. He, he was acting as if he was still alive. But he was alive. So this spirit, for it to live like that in the earth, it has to be in a body. When the body, when the spirit enters the body, a being, you, your consciousness, you, you, you are conscious of the earth. You are conscious, you have a body, you can think, you can feel. That being... That living being, that is alive, that is what is called the soul. That's what, if you read other, other translations, they'll translate it living being, living being. What does that mean? That the being, the you, the you, the you, that is living. You are conscious of the earth. You are conscious of your body. You are conscious of something. You can think. You can feel. You can act. You can decide. You are a being. That being comes alive when the spirit meets the body. That being has a mind. It has feelings. It has thoughts. 
That is the being called the soul. Man became a living soul. What does that mean? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the reason why we have traditionally divided the soul into thoughts, feelings, and, and decisions, and your will, and all of that. Why? Because those things are only possible when the spirit is in the body. Now, let me go back to death. I asked you a question, right? When man dies, what happens to the body? It goes to the ground. What happens to the spirit? It goes to God. What happens to the soul? The soul is simply the, the human being that is living on the earth. David says that, you know, depart from man. You know, the, the day he dies, his spirit returns to God. The soul goes to the, the ground and his thoughts perish. That man dies. What does that mean? He ceases to exist on the earth. The man is no longer here, but his body is there. His spirit is with God. But the man that used to talk to you is no longer there. He has died. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I, I feel so excited in my spirit. I feel like I should break your spirit and just pump this inside into your being. It will transform, it will transform your life. It will transform your life. Once you understand that, that that is what the, that is what the soul is. It is a person. The soul is you. The you that is living now on the earth. That is what we call soul. So what that means is this. When a man dies, the spirit goes to God. The body returns to the ground. The being is no longer existing. The man has died. But his spirit is still alive. Can be communicating with God. His body will decay. But the man is dead. The man, the soul, the living soul has died. So what is the soul? The soul is simply your life, your being, your earthly life that is here. And that earthly life, you have a consciousness. You are alive on the earth. You can think, you can feel, you have a body, you have a spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is so important. This is, the reason why this is so important is because one of the things um, I've been studying extensively, like I wrote in the newsletter, you know, I was trained, I was trained in the Pentecostal milieu. I've taught it multiple times myself because that's the way I was taught. That man is a spirit that lives in a body. There is a problem with that. I said there is a problem with that teaching. It is not complete. God did not, in fact, when you say that man is a spirit living in a body, the part of the confusion is because the spirit, as I said, is an independent entity. It can live by itself. For example, like the angels, the spirit can live like that. But God did not make man to be a spirit. Man, when he says man, the man became a living being, man is a mystery. That is a mysterious unity of spirit and body as one. He's not the spirit that just lives in a body. No. Neither are we a body that is simply animated by some life. No, we have a consciousness. We, we carry out purposeful movement. The mystery is that God did not make man to live as a spirit. No. God made us. Initially, he made us living souls, meaning that it is the mystery of the spirit coming together with the body that brings the man alive. The man is not a spirit, neither is he a body. He is spirit, soul, and body, one. I remember once when the Lord showed me this, this that was a long while ago. I didn't even, I hadn't even really studied the scripture a, a lot then about it. That, wow, man is not just, so I knew that something was wrong. Man, we are not just a spirit that merely lives in a body as a house. No. It's almost like a demon that picks up a body and starts living. Is that the way man is? No. We are, it's a mystery. And part of the confusion 
is that the human spirit by itself can live independently. If, I, if man was a spirit, do you know what God would have done? God would have rescued us from the body and taken us to live with him in heaven. But that is not the way we are going to live. Do you know why? We, are, we were not created to live like angels live, spirit, bodiless. No. God created man as a mysterious unity between spirit and body. We are not just a body, neither are we just a spirit. Man is one. One. His spirit and body together. So what is the soul? The soul is that being, is the you. Is the you. Is the you. That is the you that lives here on the earth. That you, that you is, is it comes alive only when the spirit and body are together. That's the reason why you say you are alive. When you die, that you vanishes. But your spirit continues to live. Your body is still there, but it starts decaying. But the you is gone. The you, meaning that the you that is living on the earth dies. The you that has that feeling, that consciousness, that has that ability to think, that is the you that God calls the living soul. That living soul is not a distinct entity. Remember I told you, God created the spirit. The spirit is a distinct entity. In other words, existentially, it can live by itself. The body is a distinct entity. Even if the spirit is not there, the body will still continue to be there, but it's going to decay. So it's very different from the spirit. The soul is not like that. The soul is not a distinct entity that you can come. Remember, I used to explain, you know, how man is a unity. I say, imagine an egg. You take the yolk, you take the yolk out, you take the white, and you take the, 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 the shell. That that's the way man is. You can divide. You, just imagine, you take the body out, you take the soul out, and you take the spirit out. No, that is not the way we are. You cannot do that with our human beings. No. The spirit you can take out. You can take out the body. But the soul is not a distinct entity. It only comes to being because it's an earthly life when the spirit meets the body. In other words, if you took man and you want to spiritually dissect man, you will find just two parts. You will not find three. That is the reason why the dichotomists are correct in a sense. Remember what I started telling you from the beginning? That... There is, there is a trichotomist view and a dichotomist view. The dichotomists are correct in the sense that man has just two parts in him, not three. Meaning what? That if you take man and you separate all his entities, different individual parts, you find just two things. You find the body and the spirit. However, when that body and the spirit come together, you have three parts. You have the body, you have the soul, and you have the spirit. And that's where the dichotomies miss it. They fail to distinguish between the soul and the spirit. What is the soul? The soul is the earthly life, the, the man that is living on the earth. That is the difference between the soul and the spirit. The soul is natural. You know, as time goes, I'll get to 1 Corinthians 15, 44 and 45. He talks about the natural body and the spiritual body. He calls the natural, the natural, uses the, the Greek word suke. The soul, the soulish body, calls the soul the natural. Is the man that lives on the earth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, dear Lord, I pray the Lord gives you understanding of this thing. You go and study this thing for yourself. In fact, part of what you find that, you see the confusion. That is in that is in you know the literature, the theological literature about the soul. Confusion. There are a lot of you know sometimes it's confusing, confusing reading you know everything, because it is this these nuances between soul and spirit and and especially what I've just explained to you. If you can understand this, that is it right in scripture. Man became a living soul. God did not directly create the soul. 
He created the body, created the spirit, brought the two together. The man became a living soul. In other words, he had consciousness. He started living. He, he got up. He knew that he had a body. He could think. He could feel. He had a consciousness. That is the living soul. That is the living soul. And interestingly, that word soul in the Hebrew, yeah, for example, nefesh, that word soul is used of animals too. When he says that, you know, God created the animals and, you know, everything that had life and they were living. It's the same, li it's the same life, animal life, earthly life. That's, that's part of the confusion. This word soul is also used for animals. However, that breath that God breathed into man in Hebrew, neshema, nesh the breath of life, is not used for animals. It came from God. Animals, their souls, their, their, their spirit, interestingly, God caught everything from the earth. I don't know how he did that. It's amazing to me. But the spirit of man, the neshema, that breath of life, it came from God directly. No animal got his breath from God directly. So when that breath came, man came alive. We started talking and acting. Hallelujah. What is the soul? The soul is the being that is living here on the earth. It's the you that you are conscious, you have a mind, you can think, you have a body, you have a spirit. It's your, it, 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 you can use it, you know, to mean just the, the, the consciousness, that your mind, your emotions and all of that. And you can also use the same word soul to refer to the entire man, body, soul and spirit. Because the, the living being is one. It's a being. He has a body, he has a spirit, he has thoughts. He functions as one. Let me, let me um, share something with you. That will, that will give you the mystery of what I'm sharing with you. For medical science, not that science is required to prove the scripture. Your thoughts, that is the soul, right? In our classical definition, the soul. Thoughts or your feelings. Are those feelings material? We know that feelings, your body is material. You can touch it. Can you touch feelings? They, you cannot touch feelings, right? Can you touch emotions or your thoughts? You can't. They are intangible. They are immaterial. They are immaterial. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something. That is a soul, right? But do you know that for that soul, for you to have those emotions... Those emotions are not just a product of your spirit. Those emotions are a product of your body and your spirit. I'm not giving you, you know, just from just from scientific perspective. Why, why, why is that important? That is the reason why a medication can affect the way you think. Somebody might say, oh, no, 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 no. I control my thoughts. No, that's not the point. The point is that your thoughts can be influenced by the body. There are people who have brain diseases, brain diseases, and they have emotional problems purely from those diseases. In other words, their body is affecting their minds. Why? It took me, I remember when the Lord showed me this, I used to always think that, you know, mental disease is always a spiritual problem. <laughs> you know, with my thinking, I used to think the soul, no, is part of the spirit, it's a spiritual problem. No, no. There are, I can give you a medication right now, it will change the way you feel. That is, you start feeling happy. You start feeling, you might even start feeling sad. Why is that important? It is telling you that your emotions are part of, the, they come out from your body and from your spirit. In other words, your body takes part in creating the emotions. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your thoughts, you require a brain, a physical brain. Why is the brain important? Because your thoughts are not just... Remember, I told you something. Because this is where the confusion comes in. The spirit, which is like God, like angels... He has the ability to think in his own way. He doesn't need a brain. Did you get that? Angels think. 
just like God thinks. He's spirit. He doesn't have a physical brain. What is the difference between the thinking of God and our own thinking? Is that we are living on the earth. Man was created to live on the earth. For us to have thinking on the earth, we require a spirit and a body, and that is what man is. In the spirit realm, we can think, oh, God will love you. We can still recognize him. We recognize Jesus, even in the spirit realm. In other words, the spirit can live independently. However, that is not man in its completion that God created. That's the reason why, as spirits, do you know what God told them? Wait, wait. He, he didn't just say, you know what, you are not in heaven. Go, go and take your inheritance. No, he's waiting to give them a body. Why? Because the man is not just a spirit, it's spirit and body. Hallelujah. So what does that mean? It means that your body is not just a house you are living in. It's part of you. Your soul is you. Your spirit is you. You are a unity. You are one. You are not a body. You are not a spirit. You are spirit and body together as one. It is the mystery of the creation of man. Hallelujah. God has made us in such a way that through our spirit, we can experience the life of the spirit and even live independently in the spirit realm. There are people, you know, they can, they can stand here and God takes them into the realm of the spirit. It is, not, it is not just their whole body. No, they are out of the body. They are in the spirit realm. They are living and talking with God. They see Jesus and they come back into their body. And that is where the confusion is coming from. They say, oh, no, because we can live like that, it means we are just simply using our body as a house. No, 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 no. That's not complete. That's not true. The, the man that God created is body and soul and spirit as one. That is what man, God has created. That is even the reason why in the new creation, we will not be spirits. We will still be men, men with a body. Let me close and tell you, you know, why this is so important. Why this is so important. Number one, the man that is living here is natural. The soul, suke, is natural. In other words, he has to be able to live on the earth. And this is where the, the, the key comes in. God is spirit. God is spirit. In your spirit, you are created in the image of God. However, it is not the spirit that lives on the earth. Remember what I told you? you it is, it's, it's not just your spirit trying to live in the body. The man, the you, that lives here and now, that's listening to me. That being that, is, that has a consciousness that can hear me, that is the soul. And this is where the issue comes in. For you to experience the supernatural, the supernatural has to take a hold of your soul. Why? Because it is the soul that lives on the earth. Do you remember when I was teaching about the difference between the Holy Spirit, the anointing, and the power of God? The spirit is spirit. Power, spiritual power is spirit. You listening to me right now, you are filled with the Spirit because you got the Spirit of God when you receive Christ. You can later on be filled with the power or be baptized with the power. But the Spirit of God came to you the day you receive Christ. That's what makes you a child of God. However, it is in your spirit. The Spirit, for it to live, for example, for you to feel the power of the Spirit, it has to be earthly. Oh, dear Lord. As, let me repeat what I just told you. For you to experience the spirit, the power of the spirit that is in your spirit, that power has to be changed from spirit to the earthly something, to earthly. If it is not changed to the earthly, it will remain spirit and never be experienced. Remember I wrote the devotional about this. Who cares about the amount of power that is in your spirit? Nobody cares. 
Do you know what we care? Is the power you experience and the power you can transmit to people. Who cares about, oh, I'm full of joy in my spirit? Yeah, who cares? It's good to know, but who cares? Yeah, you are filled with joy. However, that joy is spirit. For that joy to be experienced on the earth, the earth, the natural, where you are living, that joy has to be from spirit to flesh. The human soul, is the mystery that links the spirit and the physical realm. In other words, there is, you can take what is spirit, if it merges with the soul, it becomes manifested in the natural realm. What is the soul? Your feelings, your thoughts. Do you see where it's coming from? You take the word of God, which is spirit. You start thinking about that word. You know what you are doing. You are giving, oh, my heart, oh, glory to God. Oh, dear Lord. Oh, dear Lord. I just pray that you understand what I'm sharing with you. You take the word of God, which is spirit. By his stripes, I am healed. Who cares right now on the earth that by his stripes I am healed? That is spirit. God has loaded your spirit. But he knows that that word is spirit. However, that word has a natural correlation, which is in knowledge, scriptures. When you take that word, you start meditating on it. Meditate, think, soul, soul. Do you see that? Your soul starts meditating on that word. Do you know what you are doing? You are giving the spirit fleshly experience and expression. That is what God wants. He wants you to take the spirit and make it flesh. How do you do that? The mystery of the soul. If you're faced with a circumstance, it threatens you, you get anxious. You remember the scripture. What does the scripture say? Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. That is spirit. You can't just read it and then out of a sudden, no. That spirit has to be made flesh. It has to be made natural. It has to come to the earthly realm. How do you do that? The soul. You take that word, you obey it. What does that mean? You take your feelings and you, you respond to the spirit. In other words, you, you guide your, your feelings to respond to the spirit. Do you know what you are doing? You are taking the word of God, which is spirit, and making it become flesh. That is the reason why before you know it, you start experiencing what the spirit is saying. The soul. When you hear the Lord says, be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. What is he saying? This is the soul. It is the soul that is living here. You are full of the Holy Ghost. You have the character of God. You have the image of God inside of you. That's beautiful. Just like I said, who cares right now? Oh, I'm full of the power of God. Do you know what the sick person wants? He doesn't want to know if you are full with the power of God in your spirit until you are overflowing. Who cares, right? He wants you to put your hands on him and let that power touch him. Do you know what that means? Make that power natural. Bring it from the spirit realm to the natural realm. That is what the anointing is. It is the power of God that has consummated the soul of a man. That has given it earthly expression. You speak and power is released. Another Christian speaks, nothing happens. Why? Are they two different in Christians in their spirit? No. One has his soul completely engulfed and filled with the spirit. Another one is still there. Canal soul. The earthly life. Hallelujah. I'll, you know, I'll have to stop here. I'll have to stop here. So much, so much. Next week, probably, I'm going to continue with this. You know, I've, I've laid a few foundations for you and I've started giving you some practical, some practical things, you know, why this is so important. The soul, the soul. Last week, while I was in the hospital, you know, just getting to the hospital, the Lord, the Lord visited me in the Word. Oh, dear Lord. 
you know, I know revelation. I know when it, it doesn't come every day continuously. There are, I, I'll, that, my, my heart is a, con, I have a continual well of revelation of the word. That's my grace, the spirit of wisdom and revelation of him. But there are times when there is an intensification. I know God is specifically bringing me into something. That's what happened to me last week. And this is, it is the, he was telling about the naturalization of the spirit. What does that mean? It means that your ability, you know, uh, I read the scripture. I was trying to believe it, you know, put it to work. And the Lord was teaching me how that works. The scripture is spirit. For that spirit to be experienced, for that spirit, you are, you are in the flesh. You are, a, you are a living soul right now, right? You're still a living soul, living on the earth. That living soul is being quickened by the spirit. The time will come the Lord has called us. He's going to call us quickening spirit. I'm not going to talk about that some other day. But what that means is that you take the spirit, which is the word, and you make it natural. Ah. You give it flesh. What does that mean? Take the spirit and make it. Flesh means that it becomes palpable. It becomes experiential. Your experience is the experience of the soul. You, the way you are feeling right now is not the experience of the spirit. It is your soul. What does God want you to do? He wants you to take the spirit and give it flesh. He wants you to take the spirit and make it natural. Natural in what sense? Bring it to the realm of experience and expression. That is God's desire for you. You're full of the holy. Oh, Makata Sindele. The Lord was teaching me about the spiritual body. This is what he said. The spiritual body is going to be a body, not made of flesh, of this our flesh. Spiritual body, not spirit. It's going to be a body, material body. But that body would have the characteristics of the Holy Ghost. Oh, dear Lord. It will have the characteristics of the spirit. He calls it quickening spirit. He calls Jesus, who was raised from the dead, body, soul, and spirit. He calls him quickening spirit. He says there is a spiritual body. There's a natural body. That spiritual body, it will not be functioning like this natural body. It will have the characteristics of the spirit. In other words, it, can, it, will, have, it, it, can, it will have the power of God. It will have the strength. of. It cannot be sick. It cannot be weak. That, that body will pass through walls like Jesus did. It will not be limited by space and time. You know, you're sitting here, right? I don't know where you are. I can only... With internet now, I can imagine, right? Because the brain, the human brain is limited in its knowledge. I cannot know what you are wearing. But when that body will come, oh dear Lord, I will sit here, here, right? With the brain that I would have, with that natural body. He has a physical brain, right? Just to explain it to you. I'll be able to sit here and know clearly where you are. Everything about you. That is how the Holy Ghost functions, the spiritual body. Oh, dear Lord, what a life that will be. Do you see what? That is the man that God calls the quickening spirit, the spiritual man, the heavenly man. And the Lord was telling me, you know, you, the purpose of God in your life, what he wants you today, here and now, is that he wants the spirit to take over your soul. Oh, dear Lord, you know what he's saying? He wants you to give the spirit expression. You are depressed. There is joy in your spirit. The Lord is saying to you, there is joy in your spirit. Learn to make it ex experiential. You don't need to go and get it from somewhere. It's inside of your spirit. Learn to naturalize the spirit. That's that visitation I had. It was a rebel. Oh, my God. I knew that something had happened in my spirit. When the Spirit of God told me that, learn to make the Spirit natural. In other words, bring the Spirit to become tangible. When you talk, it's not just empty words. There is the power and the wisdom of God going out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I pray that this will be your experience. Be not conformed to this world. but Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of the mind is the transformation of the earthly man. It's the transformation of the soul, the man that lives here. It's an impartation of the life of the spirit upon the soul. So that you come into the experience, 
here and now. Don't wait to get to heaven. There is an experience for you here and now. That is because you are not just a spirit. You are a spirit and body as one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just, you know, just, just stretch your hand towards me right now. Stretch your hand towards me. Lord, I just pray everyone that is watching, I pray for wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. I pray for spiritual insight into what we've been talking about. You've given me understanding by your spirit, the same spirit that indwells your children. Everyone that is watching and listening to this, Lord, I pray for an impartation of wisdom, impartation of understanding. Lord, that there is going to be an explosion as they discover that power is already in them, wisdom is in them, prosperity and joy and grace, all that pertains to life and to godliness. We only need to make it flesh. Be not, be not conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind. The transformation of your soul. The infiltration of your soul with the spirit of the living God. Lord, I thank you. Even as I speak right now, let power begin to emerge. Bubble from the spirit. Let power begin to emerge. Let wisdom begin to emerge. Let the joy of the Lord begin to emerge and fill your people right now. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Receive all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. I feel so excited. I'm going to edit this video. Just, you know, not edit, but get, get it online. Uh, post it on uh, our YouTube channel. It's going to be on our page on our website, patrickopen.com. Please do yourself a favor. Sit down sometime. Listen to this teaching again. Listen to this teaching again. You know, you can, there are a few teachings I emphasize. Whenever I teach about the Holy Ghost and the Word, sometimes I really emphasize there are some things that you have to take a hold of. And I would encourage you, please, go and study this thing for yourself. Keep your tradition to keep your tradition aside. I told you my own case, right? I'm Pentecostal, redhead Pentecostal, charismatic. Thank God I just... I was brought up like that to understand the Holy Ghost from childhood. With all the errors and excesses, I still thank God that I would better make an error. Like the, the, I was talking about the dichotomy. I don't want to miss anything. Let me be excess and make error in excess. God would help me out rather than not knowing the Holy Ghost at all. So we thank God for our fathers who have taught us and led us in the way of the Spirit. However, go and study this thing for yourself. The Spirit of the Lord is giving us understanding, tremendous wisdom unto the body of Christ. He wants to teach you. He wants to teach you. Go and study the Word. I've told you multiple times, studying the Word is not a matter of scholar, scholarship. It's not Bible school. It's not just for you to go and... It's not academics. God did not give us the Word for theological studies. However, theological study is extremely helpful if you can use it. So go and study. Don't just take what I've written. Go and study this thing for yourself. That's the problem with believers. We don't study. Go and study this. The Holy Ghost will encounter you as you go and you are searching the Word. You will discover, go and study the human spirit, the human soul. These things I'm saying to you, go and read. Ask the Spirit to give you understanding. And you will, you will be amazed as you begin to discover who you are and what God has done, and what he wants you to do. Hallelujah. God bless you. You know, next week, I'm going to be right here, as the Lord puts in my heart, probably continue this, or maybe get into talking about the human spirit or something else. You know, but whatever it is, it's going to be such a blessing. Please share this video. Watch it again and again. I've told you that already. If you have questions, write to me. As much as time permits, I'll respond to you. The Lord bless you, and thank you so much for always watching. Hallelujah. God bless you, and I'll talk to you next week.